Hello and welcome to this week's edition of IE News. I'm Keisha Hall. And I'm Clinton Conkle. We have an outstanding show for you today, including a movie review, spotlight interview, and a brand new feature we like to call the Music Corner. And we'll take a look at a local homeless shelter and an LBCC student's effort to help the less fortunate. All this and more on this edition of IE News, so stay tuned. LBCC is making an effort to control the rabbit population on campus. If you are interested in adopting a rabbit or two, or donating towards the spay-neuter program, please call Donna Prindle at 562-938-4356 or email her at dprindle at lbcc.edu for more information. And if you see someone leaving a rabbit at Long Beach City College, please call the police department's non-emergency number at 562-435-6711. Remember, it is against the law to abandon domestic animals. Students, when was your last doctor's visit? Free height, weight, body fat, blood pressure test, and more will be available to our student body. A variety of vendors providing health education information and local services will be available. Please join us at the Pacific Coast Campus on Wednesday, October 5th in parking lot 3 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and the LAC Campus on Thursday, October 13th in parking lot R from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The fall deadline to apply for graduation is September 29th. If you're planning on completing your AA, AS, or certificate this year, please apply with the Admissions and Records Office before the deadline. And congratulations to all our graduates. We have more IE news right after this break, so stay tuned. Now that I got your attention, do you want to make movies or be a radio DJ? Yeah! I thought so. Well, come check out Long Beach City College's radio and TV department. Hey, stop playing with those buddies and get to class, young man. No, not that class. Here at LBCC, we have hands-on training, so ditch that boring lecture. Here we'll teach you state-of-the-art equipment, and in no time, you'll have the right tools to make your very own movie. Don't want to make movies? What's wrong with you? Well, you could be a radio DJ and learn all those crazy soundy stuff. Interested? Then check out our website or call. Look at you now. It looks like you're on your way to being the next Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Welcome back. Have you been to the movies recently? Left wanting your money back? Let's head into the studio where Oscar Alfonso tells us about his most recent movie experience. Hi, welcome to this week's movie review. Imagine this, a young girl witnesses her parents' death and is fueled by rage, anger, and the conviction to get revenge. Colombiana, a remake of a Colombian movie named Rosario Tijeras, adapted for the American audience. It's a plot-driven film that will keep you on the edge of your seat with action-packed scenes of pure girl power. But as exciting as um, making this film sound, I must admit that it is honestly not the best I've seen. A bit more character development would have added a more interesting aspect to the film. With that lacking, Colombiana leaves you feeling disconnected from its main character, Zoe Saldana, who you might remember from, as a sexy horror from the Star Trek movie plays Cataleja, a young girl who grows up to be an assassin. The theme, plot, and musical score of Colombiana leave a lot to be desired, and the actors are somewhat cartoonish. Director Olivier Megaton, who is well known for The Transporter 3, took a giant step backwards with this film. I was in the theater thinking the script had been written by a four-year-old. And to top it off, the film was shot in a small town in Mexico, but the setting is supposed to be in Bogotá, Colombia, something that may confuse you with all the Mexican flags you see and the lack of big city skyscrapers. In my opinion, Colombiana is not worth the box 
office price. So my advice is to wait for Netflix or even better, network TV. I rate this movie two out of five stars. Exciting in some parts, but it is not the most accurate nor well shot. This is Oscar Alfonso for IE News. Thanks, Oscar. Now let's head over to sportscaster Colin Schultz, who will take us through the opening game of this year's Viking football season. It's a sunny Saturday afternoon here, Labor Day weekend in Southern California, and it's a great day for college football. We're here at Veterans Memorial Stadium for the Long Beach City College versus Golden West College, opening day game of the 2011 season. As you see behind me, the cheerleaders and the band are setting up. The players were warming up before, and it looks to be a great day for Vikings football. Stay tuned, Viking sports fans. You can see the Vikings came out on opening day sporting some brand new Nike uniforms and they were fortunate enough to win the opening coin toss. After electing to defer their choice, they kicked off to the Golden West Rustlers. And sadly, it was all downhill from there as things did not go according to Coach Rice Biggs game plan. Um, defensively, um, we are a little bit older. Uh, just about the entire defensive line is back, and we've added a few guys over there. Um, so that's helped, and we've, our linebacker core is uh, older and bigger and faster than it was last year, so that helps one of the young men. Jared Ginter is a running back that's back. Um, he took a bulk of the snaps for us last year offensively. Um, offensive line, we're a little bit young, um, but we do have a couple of returners. Uh, Justin AC and uh, Stefan Duby are the two that are back there. Well, that young offensive line had some trouble with the Golden West College defense, and Vikings starting quarterback Ryan Craighead was pulled from the game after surrendering two picks. I know Ryan Craighead missed most of last year with the injury. Um, was it tough for you guys to get back in yeah, sync with him? It's a, it's a little bit hard because, you know, he's a little bit slower from what he was last year. So working with him, it's kind of hard because, like, you know, we got to kind of slow down. And it's, just, it's just very difficult because he's coming off of ACL injury. So it's hard for him to throw certain ways and stuff. The Vikings were down 26 to nothing after the first quarter, and at the time of the second half kickoff, they were facing a 33 to zero deficit that proved to be insurmountable, and penalties and mental mistakes also made things even more difficult for the Vikings. I know you missed most last year with injury, and th this was uh, your first game coming back. You were able to get a medical red shirt. Yes. Um, just how did you feel your first game back? Uh, to be honest, it's a little rusty. I haven't seen live game action in a year's time. I would have liked to do a little bit better, but got to come back next week, get it going. Well, it was a disappointing loss for the Vikings as they open up the season by getting shut out by the Golden West Rustlers, 42 to nothing. The Vikings from the get-go didn't seem like they could do anything. A lot of mistakes on special teams, defense, and offense, several turnovers, and many penalties is what cost the Vikings this game. This has been Colin Schultz with IE News. Thanks, Colin. Don't touch that dial. Coming up after the break, an exclusive interview with a former Viking who is now given back by volunteering with the Peace Corps. Welcome back. Our very own reporter, Fofayu, was able to sit down with Antoine Thomas, 
a volunteer from the Peace Corps and former student to talk about the importance of helping out your fellow man. Let's take a look. Most of the time we highlight faculty and staff of LBCC, both past and present, who have given back to the community in many ways. But very often do we find out about students joining large organizations such as the Peace Corps. Now joining us today is a former LBCC student, a graduate of Cal State Dominguez Hills, and now a U.S. Peace Corps. Uh, Mr. Antoine Thomas, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you, thank you. Nice to be here. How was your day? <clears throat> it's going pretty well, it's going pretty well. It was long, I've been up since six o'clock this morning. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Thomas, many students plan on becoming who they wanna be as they grow up and as they go through their course of study in college. Yeah. Were there any plans, any future goals for you uh, before even considering joining the Peace Corps? Um, teaching. Um, my mother was an elementary school teacher um, mm -hmm. back in Chicago, and because of that, I feel like that was, that played a pretty big role in uh, my decision making as far as wanting to be a teacher. Also, I love kids. And so I graduated from Cal State Dominguez with a liberal studies degree. Mm -hmm. um, and I began teaching at Kettering Elementary School. I was a TA at Kettering Elementary School for uh, special needs preschool children. Mm -hmm. And um, from that, um, I discovered Peace Corps. I believe by then, before then, I had already discovered Peace Corps. And I just, I, it called me. It called to me. Uh -huh. yeah. So what changed your mind? What, what made you give up? all the things that you had here, your family, your friends, uh, you know, uh, obviously, you know, the lifestyle, you know, how easy things are here, and then joining Peace Corps, you know, obviously there's gonna be, you know, a lot of things that you're gonna have to sacrifice, why? Yes, the, um, I believe there was a movie that I saw, actually it was Hotel Rwanda. Mm -hmm. There was um, one particular scene where, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but there was a scene where you, they were, they pulled out all of the non-African citizens and they put them on buses and they shipped everyone out. Mm -hmm. And there was a scene with Nick Nolte and Don Cheadle and he said, yeah. like, why aren't you guys helping? And he said, it's because you're African. And that one line, it just stuck with me. And so from that, I felt like that scene was just extremely powerful to me. And so when I saw that, I believe that I saw um, once they were speaking to Don Cheadle, um, off camera and he was speaking about Hotel Rwanda and he started to bring up numerous organizations, um, ways you can help. And I heard Peace Corps and I've never heard of it before and so mm -hmm. I looked it up and Googled it and when I saw it, I was like, I can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so once you decided to join, you know, mm -hmm. you became a member of the Peace Corps. Out of the 139 countries that the Peace Corps is, uh, you know, that, that Peace Corps volunteers are um, are helping out in. Mm -hmm. uh, which one are you currently in? I am in South America in Guyana. Mm -hmm. Guyana now, is America. this your first time being there? Yes. Okay. okay. Now Guyana, for some of those of you who don't know where it's located, uh, it's on the northeastern uh, coast of South America and it's a part of the Anglophone uh, Caribbean. You know, just a little geography there for our viewers. Uh, but Mr. Uh, Thomas, how long of a time period do you have uh, as a volunteer to, to be in the, you know, a foreign country? Uh, is it up to you or is it up to the agency to, to come up with this, uh, this time? Yeah, it's, um, it's a given time. When, you, when it, they tell you that you are 27 months. Mm -hmm. So you are expected to be there for 27 months. Of course, you can leave at any time, but they expect 27 months. Um, we, my country in particular in Guyana, because that is an English speaking country, we have 26. Mm -hmm. So our training was only two months. We had two months of training and then mm -hmm. 24 months of service. So obviously, you know, with anything that we do, you know, there's always challenges. And, uh, you know, and I found out that a part of your in-country training is you obviously have to learn about the language, yes. uh, the culture, uh, the environments that surround you. Now, you just mentioned that, uh, you know, your time was supposed to be 27, but it moved down to 26 mm -hmm. uh, because it's an English-speaking community. Yes. Um, so, in other words, it's a little bit easier for you guys, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, this, this huge transition, you know, from here in the States, being in South America, how did you prepare yourself, you know, for this massive uh, change in your life? Um, how did I prepare myself? I, I consider myself to be a pretty open-minded person and always. And so my preparation was there. I didn't have any preparation. I don't think I prepared anything. I just knew I wanted to go out and help. 
-hmm. Now, <clears throat> I believe that I had, as I said, um, from watching Hotel Rwanda, uh, I had Africa in mind, to be completely honest. And mm -hmm. when uh, I was granted um, South, when I was granted Africa and Zambia in particular, I was pretty ecstatic, and uh, they switched me over at the last, very last second, and told me South America, Guyana, um, two weeks before leaving. And so we, so, but it was interesting. It was interesting because at that given point, I was, I was a little hesitant on the idea of going somewhere else mm -hmm. um, because I was so sold on going to Africa. But one thing that the Peace Corps, um, my trainer always told me was, any place in Peace Corps is the best place. And I didn't quite understand that until you, until I went to Guyana and No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Mr. Thomas, you, you talked about how at first it was supposed to be, um, you know, in, in, in Africa and then how they changed you last minute to mm -hmm. South America. Uh, now, the, 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 the countries that volunteers go to, is it up to the volunteers to, 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 to select, to choose where they want to go, or is it up to the agency? Um, what they tell you is when, when you're filling out the application process, which mm -hmm. is usually done, is, which is done online, um, after you finish out the application process, you have the live interview. Now, during the interview, the lady or the gentleman will ask you, where would you like to go? Now, when they ask you this, they're asking about the continent. Mm -hmm. They're not asking about the country. They ask you what continent. So would you like to go to Africa? Would you like to go to South America? Would you like to go to, you know? And so um, they, the best thing that they would always tell you is to stay, keep an open mind, because that's what they like to see, an open mind. Mm -hmm. Um, a volunteer who is willing to go anywhere and who, as I told you in my circumstance, who is willing to be told that you are going one place and at the very last minute you are going to mm -hmm. um, switch on and go to a completely different place. They like people who are just open-minded. Okay. Uh, well, uh, you know, since being in, in Guyana, <clears throat> Since being in Guyana, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of projects that, you know, for you to work on. Uh, you know, can you tell us a little about uh, the Women's Empowerment Project? I, I, I kind of found out about it on the, uh, uh, the U.S. Peace Corps Guyana uh, um, page. Can you tell us a little bit about yes, that? Yes, yes. Um, well, in our particular, in my particular village, we have, uh, there is a one, an extremely big issue that we have in our village is um, spousal abuse. Um, the women are usually treated, are treated extremely unfair out there. And mm -hmm. So I decided to come up with the women empowerment um, class. And what I do is I talk to the younger men and young women about the issue because it, it's extremely interesting to know that um, in a class that would, that is 75% women that 90 to 95 per agree with the idea of beating a woman. And so I took it on to myself to challenge them and to challenge the young men and to talk to everyone out there about the okay, well, uh, gender uh, equality. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just, you know, before we let you go, we'll let you go, Mr. Thomas, uh, is there any advice, any kind of advice for those who are out there who are thinking about joining the Peace Corps, who are thinking about, you know, uh, giving, giving back to, you know, uh, a foreign country other than the United States? Is there any advice for them? Uh, keep an open mind. Keep an open mind, because as long as you have an open mind, you are, it, oh, the possibilities are countless. Mm -hmm. Because if you go out to another country and you have expectations, um, you know, you might just let yourself down because you don't know what these people have to offer. You don't know what the community has to offer. And so they really, really, really just keep an open mind and take everything as is. Um, one thing they will always try to tell you is please mm -hmm. try to <clears throat> speak to the people, but not try to come out there with your own ideas and tell them the way that everything should be ran you know they have their own ways of thinking you can suggest ideas to them but do not come out there and just try to mm -hmm. force your ideas and beliefs on them and so oh keeping an open mind because you're learning from them you are going to be learning from them just as much as they're learning from you because in most cases they have never seen an american except on the television and it's a little bit it even gets a little bit more interesting when you are a U.S. citizen of color, 
because mm -hmm. they've never seen anything like that. They just expect everyone is white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, uh, Mr. Uh, yeah. Antoine Thomas, we, we spoke before the um, before this interview, and you you, you mentioned that you will. Uh, you were you were gonna uh, you're gonna leave in a few days. So on behalf of I News, we'd like to thank you very much for joining us on yeah. the show, and we wish you the best of luck with future projects in Guyana yeah. and uh, anything that uh, will, you know as you uh, are your duties um, in the Peace Corps. Um, that is our show for today. Thank you for watching. This is the I News Spotlight interview on Fafo Unafai for I News. Thank you. Wow, that was really enlightening, folks. Now let's head into the studio where IE News reporter Chris Johnson has a music review you won't want to miss. Hello and welcome to a little segment we here at IE News like to call the Music Corner. This week we're taking a look at the Fleet Foxes' new album, Helplessness Blues. This is the second studio album from the Seattle-based folk band Fleet Foxes, and let me just say, it does not disappoint. If you were hoping for another phenomenal rock album, Riddle with three-part harmonies and acoustic guitars, you're going to be very happy. Robin Pecknold, primary songwriter for the Fleet Foxes, is often guilty of writing songs about imaginary people and places in time. Let me just say that there's nothing wrong with that. However, this time around, he stepped out of his shell to focus a bit more on the frustrations and questions of life. This becomes obvious right off the bat with the song Montezuma, a beautiful song that is carried by a flawless melody and finger-plucking guitar fun. The ethereal harmonies, haunting electric guitars, and outlook on the questions of growing older are the perfect setup for the theme of the album. The record flows perfectly from one song to another and is never boring. Songs like Bedouin Dress, Sim Sala Bim, and Battery Kinsey keep the flow of the album stirring while folk anthems like Helplessness Blues and Growing Ocean will have you singing for days. Personally, my favorite song on the album is Blue Spotted Tail. The tune is a very delicate acoustic ballad questioning the purpose of life in the universe. The lyrics, why in the night sky are lights on? Why is the earth moving around the sun, floating in the vacuum with no purpose, not a one, have haunted me for days and I haven't been able to quit humming the melody. Overall, the album is a perfect single, sequel to their self-titled debut album and in my opinion, it's possibly a bit better. Helplessness Blues has definitely put the Fleet Foxes in the forefront as one of the best up-and-coming bands to date. If only K-Rock would start playing better music, everyone would have the chance to hear the enchanting sounds that are Fleet Foxes. For I News, I'm Chris Johnson. Thanks, Chris. I'll make sure to check out that album. It's time to take another break, so stay tuned. Welcome back. IE News reporter Chris Johnson had a chance to sit down with one of the many clubs on campus to talk about their new dance crew. Let's check it out. Hello and welcome to this week's Spotlight interview. Today we're joined by the Sankofa Scholars. Uh, they're a club on campus who recently started a stepping club. Um, to my left is Reginald Vincent, the chairman of the club. To the left of him is Joelle Massey, the president of the club. And to the left of her is Sandy Dent, the secretary of the club. Now, for those who don't know, what exactly is stepping? Well, stepping is a dance, uh, the combination of hands and feet, basically. You're making beats with your hands and your feet. Okay, and where did stepping get its roots? It originated all the way back to Africa. So back then they used to use it um, as a form of dance and then when it moved into the slavery days and um, they started to use it as uh, communication. They used it as a form of communication because they weren't allowed to express themselves. And then when, um, when it came to the war, the soldiers used it 
to entertain themselves. So that's when they combinated with songs and dance, and that's how they incorporated Stephanie. That's very interesting. Um, now I know that it's become more and more popular. How has uh, have how have movies like particularly Stomp the Yard and TV shows like America's Best Dance Crew affected Stepping? Stepping has really grown especially from the movie Stomp the Yard. I know a lot of people were interested after seeing the movie. I was. And as well as the TV show America's Best Dance Crew, we have dance incorporated with our step. So it's, it's actually a good look. It makes people want to do it more. It's a big, it's like an encouragement hmm. to us. So does it feel good to step? Is it something that, I mean, I want, I want to go down the line and ask you guys, like, how has it affected your life? How does it make you feel when, when you're stepping? Well, it just, honestly, it makes me feel like, you know, we're more organized. It makes me feel like it's more of a, a militant standpoint, but even though it's the side steppers are ladies, um, but it makes me feel like a, a sense of pride, should I say. Okay. For me, um, I love stepping. I used to do it when I was younger, kind of got out of it, and then we had an event here, actually, and we wanted to do we wanted to do something different, and we decided to step, and that ended up being bigger than we expected. <laughs> so now the stepping has actually put our club out there, and I'm I'm actually glad we did that. Okay, how is it? And know? for me, uh, stepping it is a form of dance, and I'm a dancer, so I love to perform. And it really the whole point of stepping is basically having fun and getting your emotions out there. So you're stepping in and you're communicating without using words. So we like to use the model to the beat of one drum. So we're all united and we're showing um, our way in communicating and entertaining. It's the stepping. Okay. Now, other than, other than stepping, um, what kind of uh, activities and what kind of things do uh, Sankofa Scholars, what are, what are you involved in other than stepping? Um, we are involved in various community service projects. Okay. Uh, a couple semesters ago, we did the Miller's Children Hospital. Okay. Uh, we have a beach cleanup coming um, here in a couple weeks. Uh, we do a lot of things on campus, a lot of the intramural sports, basketball, football. But the main thing that we focus on is our academics. And when we have students who struggle in various subjects, we would choose one of the scholars who has possibly got an A in that subject to lean on that person and tutor. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, how can a student on campus say, what if, I, what if myself or what if somebody else wanted to get involved in Sankofa and wanted to be, get involved in the stepping uh, club, what, what would they have to do? We have, as far as the, the stepping goes, we're having auditions this week on Thursday at from 5 to 7 p.m. and Friday at 12 p.m. in the big gym upstairs. And if you want to get involved in the club, actually we have a meeting every Wednesday from 12.15 to 1.15 in the E building, Vahala upstairs room. in the Vahala room. So we're there every Wednesday and if you can't make the meetings and you can contact one of us, we can just appoint you to the different um, events that we have and we can get you going into the club. So. Okay, and uh, are there any events coming up that uh, the students here at Long Beach City should know about? We have a beach cleanup this Saturday. Okay. Um, that's going to be at Colorado Lagoon. We have uh, the Reggae Fest is coming up, actually. We're having, we're going to be stepping there as well. Um, that's from 12 to 8, what we were told. We have the Miller's Children, as he was saying. We have that coming up as well. It's, it's a lot on our plate for the semester. We're just trying to stay busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys very, very much for joining us. Uh, You're welcome. That about wraps things up here. I'm Chris Johnson for IE News. Thanks so much, Chris. I can't wait to see them perform. Well, that's a wrap. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of IE News. There are plenty of opportunities here at Long Beach City College. The radio and television department invites you to join our team. If you are interested in becoming a member of our news team here and produce great television, please call 562-938-4892. I'm Clinton Conkle. And I'm Keisha Hall. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.